All right, so before we get started, take out your calculators. In the top row of your calculator, there is a mode button, M-O-D-E. Hit that mode button. And I think the second, can I look over your shoulder? Mode. The third thing, no, the fourth thing down says radians and degrees. You should be in degrees. So go over to degrees and hit enter. Now, this is something that you need to be careful about, especially if you share your calculator. Let's suppose that you and your older brother shared calculators. If your brother's in calculus, he's going to be in radiance mode. You need to be in degrees mode. And the problem is, as we start doing these problems, if you're in the wrong mode, there will be no indication that you're in the wrong mode. You'll get answers. The answers will just be wrong. Okay, so be careful. I will remind you, on a regular basis, make sure you're in degrees mode, make sure you're in degrees mode. If you never give your calculator to anybody, then you don't need to worry about it. While we're on that mode screen, um, if you take a look at the third one down, you should be on float. That way you will get all the decimal values. It'll float to wherever it's appropriate. If you put it to any special number, it will always give that number of decimal places and you don't necessarily want that. You want it to give you the appropriate number of decimal places. Okay, we good to go? Questions? Again, if you never give your calculator to anybody, you don't have to worry about it. Just make sure you're in degrees and you're good to go. Okay. So, what is trigonometry? Trigonometry is a process by which we can find values in triangles that up until now we haven't been able to find. So we've done problems with Pythagorean theorem, for instance. Pythagorean theorem works great if, one, you have a right triangle, and two, you know two of the sides. So that's a very specific example that we can solve. And in fact, that's about the only thing we can solve. Now, trigonometry is going to allow us to solve a lot of different triangles. Initially, it's only going to work with right triangles. This is technically called right triangle trig. But later on, after Thanksgiving break, we'll, dale, we'll delve into triangles that aren't right triangles, and this will be a big deal. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna talk about how to label a triangle. This is one possibility, but what's important here is the fact that notice where the letters are oriented with respect to capital and lowercase letters. Okay, capital letters represent vertices. They're the corners of the triangle. Lowercase letters represent the length of sides. You're going to screw that up, but you'll learn through practice. So early on, I'm going to give you pictures of the triangles, which will make your, your life a lot easier. Later on, you're going to have to draw your own pictures, so you're going to have to understand how this works. It doesn't have to be triangle ABC. It could be triangle XYZ. Okay, so let's say, for instance, you have triangle XYZ. And uh, we'll make angle Z the right angle. So what's that going to look like? Z is the right angle. Put X over here. Put Y over here. This is lowercase x. This is lowercase z. This is lowercase y. Okay. Y across from Y. X across from X. Z across from Z. We'll also be practicing, by the way, more and more Greek letters. They'll continue to show up. We've delved into some of those, haven't we? No? We haven't done any Greek letters? Oh, okay, hold on. We're starting today. This is called a theta. T-H-E-T-A, theta. It's a Greek letter that in mathematics is commonly used to refer to an angle measure. I'm going to start you with three today. We're, we're going to, there's 20, hold on. There's 24 Greek letters. So I'm just going to start you with three today that are the most common. This is an alpha. 
By the way, these are lowercase Greek letters. There's also uppercase, but we're just going to deal with lowercase. Okay, it looks like a fishy. Uh, let's see, we'll do one more. Which one will we do? Uh, let's go in order. We'll do beta. Beta looks like a bee with a tail. And for our purposes, we're going to use those Greek letters to represent angle measures. Okay. There's your Greek letter lesson for today. By the time May rolls around, my goal is to have you uh, able to understand at least 20 of the 24 lowercase Greek letters. It'll be quite an accomplishment. Your knowledge will be broadened tremendously. Okay, so trig is just like any other function. It's like addition, it's like subtraction, it's like square rooting. You take a value, you <coughs> apply the function to it, it spits out another value. And they're defined this way. Okay, there's three of them, sine, cosine, and tangent. And they're abbreviated S-I-N-C-O-S-T-A-N. Look at your calculator, find those buttons on your calculator. They're pretty hard to miss. Please do not call them sin, cos, and tan. Sine, cosine, and tangent. There's actually six of them we're only going to deal with three of them in this class. You'll get to all six next year. Something to look forward to. Okay? Any problems? Beautiful. All right, so what are they? Here's their definitions. If you take the sine of some angle, it's simply a ratio. So before we go any further, look at the title of this slide. Trig ratios which is why we covered ratios the other day. Don't overthink this. Sine, cosine, and tangent are simply setting up ratios within the triangle. And so, for instance, sine is defined as the length of the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Cosine is defined as the leg adjacent next to over the hypotenuse. So let's talk about that for a second. Stop writing for a second and look up here. If I talk about the sine of angle A, I'm looking at this angle. It's pretty clear which type. It's pretty clear which side is opposite. That would be A. It's pretty clear which one is the hypotenuse, right? It's the longest side, it's opposite the right angle. That one's easy. But what about cosine? Let's talk about adjacent. If I look at angle A, there's actually two sides adjacent to angle A, B or C. Which one do you choose? You choose B because C has to be the hypotenuse. Okay. And then the tangent, the opposite side over the adjacent side, again, you ignore the hypotenuse and take the adjacent side to be one of the legs. One thing that you will hear in the future is the following. If you have older friends, older brothers or sisters, and you say to them, oh yeah, today we started trig, they would probably look at you and say, so katoa. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That might help some of you. 
sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, are we good to go? No. Okay. How about now? No. Now? No. How about yet? No. No. Whosever phone that is that continues to chirp, that will stop. I just looked over Emma's shoulder and she has that and then hypotenuse and all that. I uh, thought that was pretty, that's pretty good. I'm going to steal that. Okay, I'll add it to my slideshow for later. Okay, now we're good? Yeah. So, trig is going to get complicated. It's not necessarily easy but it's not necessarily difficult. Memorizers will struggle. The reason you'll struggle is because you're gonna go home and memorize the sine of A is A over C. The sine, cosine of A is B over C. And then I'm gonna give you a triangle labeled P, Q, and R and you're gonna be dead in the water. So it's the other stuff that you're concerned about. The sine of an angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. That last statement will work for any triangle. Here we go. I've got a triangle, APE. Abby, which side is the hypotenuse? Yeah. Those of you watching the video, Abby pointed to side AP. How do you know that's the hypotenuse, Abby? <coughs> Bingo. Abby, how else do you know that's the hypotenuse? It's the, it looks like it's the longest side. Oh, it is the longest side. Because 5 is greater than 3 and 4. Right? Okay. So we have uh, six things to find. Let's start with the sine of angle A. What is the sine of angle A? A. Wow. Four divided by five. Four divided by five. Is he correct? <coughs> yes. Well done, Bao. Could you explain that, please? Because it's, so it's opposite way, so it's four, and it's the hypotenuse from the bottom, so it's four and five. Well done. What's the cosine of angle A? Um, Evan, you got this. Five fifths. No, or three fifths. Three fifths, perfect. Yeah, five fifths would be crazy. Well done. Bella, what's the tangent of A? Well done. Okay, let's talk, stop and take a breather there. Is everybody good? Again, KISS method. We're keeping it simple. It's just understanding that we're getting a ratio of two sides in relationship. All right, let's keep going. What's the sign? Uh, actually, you know what? Let's change colors uh, to blue. What's the sine of angle P? Emma? Um, Hot diggity. How about the cosine of P? Damien? Uh, 
Uh-huh. And last but not least, the tangent of P is what, Ava? 3 over 4. Well done. Any problems? We're good? Okay. Now, I don't expect you to have that slide memorized yet. You will burn it into your brain through repeated usage. But for now, it's okay to reference that. You'll notice I didn't ask you about angle E. For giggles, let's try angle E. Karen, what's the sign of E? Why? It's 5 over 5. Okay, that's interesting. We'll come back to that. What's the cosine of E? So, honey. Four over five. Or three over five. Four over five or three over five. And math, do you think we could get two answers like that? No. So that's a problem. We also get a problem when we do the tangent of E. Five over three or five over four. These double answers are a problem. So the best way to not deal with that is to not deal with that. We're seldomly, if ever, going to work with the right angles. We're always going to work with the two acute angles. Okay, we stay away from the right angle because it causes problems. You can't have answers of both four-fifths and three-fifths, or five-thirds and five-fourths. Okay, so stay away from the right angle. Okay, we're good? All right, let's play with the calculator a little bit. Find the cosine button on your calculator, type in the cosine of 41 degrees, and see what you get. Point seven five four seven. yes? Whoops. Good. So everybody got the same answer, so we're all in degrees mode, right? Say it again, Karen. Yeah, cosine of 41. We'll stop there. 0.754 is good. Okay, take the tangent of 74. You get 3.48. Yes. Sine of angle 2. Sorry, sine of 2 degrees is 0.034. So we're all good. We're in degrees mode, right? All right, just for giggles, uh, based on what Karen told us, take the sine of 90 degrees. What do you get? One. Beautiful. Take the cosine of 90 degrees. What do you get? Zero. Zero. Ooh. Now things get interesting. Take the tangent of 90 degrees. Error. 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 Oh, 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 oh. That's why we're going to stay away from that 90 degree angle because it's scary and we get all kinds of weird answers. Okay. All right, so we're good to go. Your calculator should be in degrees mode, so now we can use it to start solving problems. Okay, let's take a, a, um, a knowledge check. Is everybody good to go with this idea? We're good? Yes? Okay, so if you're all able to handle that stuff in the red and the blue, the rest of what we're going to do should be easy peasy because all you're going to do is solve equations. Okay? You're going to set up an equation like the red or the blue that you're going to solve it. Okay. So here we go. Now, first thing you need to check, is that a right triangle? Yes. Okay. And early on, that's all you're going to get. Okay. Rosemary, let's have you work through this. Would you like to do X or Y? Um, can I pass it on to someone else? No. Um, I mean, I can save you for later for a harder problem. Okay, then. Oh, I thought you'd see it my way. <coughs> I'll do X. X it is. All right. Now, this, this process that I'm going to go through is going to become second nature eventually. But until we get to that point, I'm going to go step by step and talk you through this problem. Okay. Now, side note. How big is that angle? Brody. But we're not going to use that angle. I don't care. I'm going to use the given information. All right, so we're dealing with this 40-degree angle. Rosemary. Oh, yeah. 
I didn't even ask my question yet. See that side X, what we're looking for? Yeah. Is that X opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse from the 40 degree angle? Um, um, is not a good way to start an answer, start over. Wait, what are my options? <laughs> opposite, opposite, adjacent, or... What did you say? Opposite. Is she right? Yes, okay, so X is opposite. Well, you had a 33% chance, so good job. The X side that we're looking for is opposite the 40 degree angle. The other chunk of information that we have is that three. Rosemary, yeah. is that three meter side adjacent or hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. Thank you, Rebecca. You also gave her the answer? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, both of you. What would she do without you? So the three is the hypotenuse. Yeah. We're looking for the opposite side. We know the hypotenuse. Which trig function is that? Sine. Sine. Good. Okay, so everybody's with me so far. Now I just set up the equation. The sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. I don't know where the 30 came from. I'm sorry. I lost my mind. Okay, now before you calculate anything, tell me about the possible values for x. What can x be and what can't x be? And? And x plus y? Uh, just x. And Can x be negative? No. Okay. So as long as we get an answer that's not negative and it's less than 3, we're good to go. Okay. Solve that equation, please. What do you got? I'm sorry? Solve it. Meg, answer? No. Nope. That sounds better. 1.92? How'd you get that? Um, I did the sine of 40, and then I got that, and then I multiplied the answer of that by 3. Excellent. Okay, so two ways you can solve this. Uh, one is you could do that and cross multiply, but that you don't really need to do that. You could just do what Abby said and multiply both sides by 3. So 3 times the sine of 40 equals x, and x equals 1 point, let's go two decimal places. You said 9, 2? Yes. 9, 2. And those are meters because we have units up there. Well done. <coughs> yes, sir? Um, when you multiply... Oh, that's not a good way to start a question. Start over. When you multiply sine 40 times 3, is it, is it just 40 times 3? Oh, great question. You have to be careful how you type that into your calculator. Okay, so notice, on your calculator, type sine of 40. Don't hit anything else. Just hit sine button, 4, 0. You'll notice that the calculator automatically puts a set of parentheses in before the 40, but doesn't close the parentheses. So if you type in sine of 40 times 3, it's actually going to do the sine of 120 degrees. Okay. There's a big difference between this and 
this. Now, how do I eliminate that problem? Notice where I put the three. I put the three out in front. So I get three times the sine of 40. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so can you basically just like get the answer of the sine of 40 and then do like answer times three and it'll get you? Perfect, yeah. That's another way to handle it. Okay, questions? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time dealing with how to solve these equations. You should be able to do that. Yeah. Amelia, you're up. You get to do Y. You want red or black? Uh, red. Okay. You ready? Sure. Okay. With the angle of 40 degrees, is Y the opposite, the adjacent, or the hypotenuse? Um, adjacent. Adjacent. And we know three. We already did that. It's the hypotenuse. Which function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Say again? Cos. Not cos. 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 Cosine, thank you. The cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Solve, please. Don't trust my picture. Don't think that y is going to be bigger than 1.92. It might be but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Same rules apply, however, with what Bob talked about earlier. It's got to be less than 3, but greater than 0. Lucy, back to you. What's why? Can somebody confirm? Yeah. 2.29, you said? Well done. Okay. Now, wait a second. Did I have to do that for y? And the answer is no, I don't have to use trig. I could have used. No. Could have used Pythagorean theorem. However, trig is going to be more accurate. Notice when I set up that equation in red. There's no approximate values. If I start doing Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to use an approximate value of 1.92. I want to try to stay away from that. OK, we good? Now, if you feel all fancies in your pantsies and you want to use the 50 degree angle, you could do the problem again and use the 50 degree angle. You're just going to have different equations. Because now with the 50 degree angle, the y is the opposite side, the x is the adjacent side. The equations look different. The value should be the same. OK, questions? This is the basic idea behind right triangle trig. Solving for two of the sides when you only know one side at an angle. Okay. I can't solve that using Pythagorean theorem. i got to use trig. Let's get this out of the way. You and your group solve for R and S. Go. Real quick, so you don't go down the rabbit hole. Olivia, which one is the hypotenuse? 35 R or S? No. S is the hypotenuse. Okay, good. Carry on.
pretty quick at that has to be on the top of the taxes and fees. And that's what costs the problems on the internet. Yeah, all of the internet is going to be too. That's what we're going to do. Sure, we're going to try and hold that to the opposite side. Go to the opposite side. What's up, Smiley? So let's store that number and store it into X. Okay, so then you did, what was the second question? The sine of 15.5 is R X. Oh, I see what you did. Then you solved it wrong. Your equation is correct, you said you solved it wrong. Try cross multiply with that sine of 15.5 over 1 and then cross multiply. <coughs> Seven for R. Yeah. Good. Nine point seven for R. Yep. Beautiful. Brody. You got it. Okay, so let's take a look at this together. I saw a couple different problems pop up, so we'll address both of those problems. Um, the biggest problem is that people were not recognizing which sides are which. And so I purposely flipped this triangle over to make your life a little bit more difficult. S is the hypotenuse. Okay. So Ava, what was the first equation you set up? Good. Okay. Now, some of you said, oh, the sine of 15.5 is equal to R over S. That's 100% correct. But we can't solve that. There's too many variables. Okay. So we start with what we know. And th this is why I took uh, Rosemary and Amelia through those steps. Because I asked myself, OK, I'm going to solve for R first. Which side is that? Well, that's the opposite side from the angle. Which side is this? That's the adjacent. 
Which side uses, which function uses opposite over adjacent? That would be tangent. Boom, you get that equation that Ava just gave me. Solving this, you multiply both sides by 35. And Ava, you got 9.7 something or another? Yeah. Good. Store that number. Don't use 9.7 to do your further calculations. It'll cause problems. Can you use that? Yes, you can. You just have to use the stored value. Okay, so that's the first problem. Now, how to find S, you can approach a couple different ways, and this is what was causing issues for people. Um, Ava, give me your second equation to solve for S. I didn't get it. Well, give me the one that I, the, the sine equation. Okay, that's perfect. Everybody good to go here? I'll show you a different way to do S in a second, but she's using the 9.7 to solve her S. And this is where the difficulty comes in. How do you deal with an equation that has the <coughs> S in the denominator? Notice, if I multiply both sides by 9.7, that doesn't solve the problem. Okay, say again. Bingo, cross multiply. I'll show you an easier way to do that. But basically what happens is we put this over one and we cross multiply. However, I like to use something I call the switcheroo. What the switcheroo does is it takes the thing on this side and switches it with the denominator. And we get S equals 9.7 divided by the sine of 15.5. You get the same results when you cross multiply and solve for S. What is that equal to? 9.7 divided by the sine of 15.5. Yeah, go. Oh, it's contagious. His, you're, you got all lucky. His has exploded. Blood everywhere. Hope it makes it to the nurse without bleeding out. That'd be rough. Yeah, if I had a memorial, we'd all wear black armbands. Let's solve this problem for Brody. Fallen comrade. We probably get out of, out of school though. People that out in the hallways and those we probably get out of school today. Answer? No, just a quick question. Can we add both of them by one over nine point seven? You can. But that still leaves us in the denominator. Is it thirty six point two? 36.29. Point to what? 36.32. Okay, well, again, it's going to depend on whether you use 9.7 or you use the stored value of 9.7, whatever. It doesn't matter. We get 36. Does this answer make sense? Yes, because the hypotenuse has to be longer than the other two sides. Push it. Good, and you can do it a different way. I'm, I'm thinking you did it using cosine. Yeah. Yeah, so the other way to do it would be to say the cosine of 15.5 is equal to 35 over S. Same thing. Okay, it's solving that problem where the, where the variable is in the denominator that's going to cause trouble for some of you. But that's still algebra one stuff. You should be able to solve that. If the switcheroo idea doesn't make any sense, then use Damien's idea and cross multiply. You get the same results. Question. How come the answer differs if it's like the stored version or 9.7? Because isn't the stored version 9.7? No. no. The, nine, the stored version, when you, when you calculated this, you had 9.7 plus a bunch of other stuff. Okay. By the way, Copying all 10 digits off your calculator isn't an exact answer. That's still an approximate answer. It's just displaying the first time. Okay. Is it a deal breaker if you use 9.7? No. But as we start to do more and more complicated calculations, you're going to have to use stored values or they're going to start being more and more wronger. Okay. Questions on this before we move on because this is important. We're good. So you can solve a basic right triangle. 
Bao. So for the switching thing, I can use it for all three of them, right? Yes, sir. But most commonly use the switcheroo when you're doing the, when your variable is in the denominator. And it's also good for like normal numbers, right? Yep. Okay. It's basically a variation of cross multiplying. Okay, we're good. If you get confused, go back to the basics that I talked about. What side is the variable that you're looking for? Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. What side is the variable or is the information that you're given? Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Which trig function uses those two things? Set up an equation and solve. Okay, we're good? All right. I'm going to assume that everything's okay and we're going to move on. Because now, the one thing we haven't addressed is what if I don't give you an angle measure and I want to use, I want to find the angle measure? Okay, so here's a triangle where I gave you all three sides and I want to know how big angle P is. Look on your calculators and look what's written above the cosine button, for instance. So you've got a button there that says cosine on it. Right. Above the cosine button, above the sine function, and above the trig function is what's called an inverse function. What does an inverse function do? It undoes the function. So what's the inverse function of addition? It's subtraction. Subtraction. What's the inverse function of multiplication? Division. Division. What's the inverse function of squaring? Square rooting. Square rooting. Right. So functions have inverse functions. They undo what the original function does. Okay, so we're going to take a very basic KISS method approach to this. Okay, you all know the KISS method, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, so we're going to go, I'm, I, that's too confusing, I'm just going to start with this. Let's suppose I knew angle P. But instead of uh, knowing how big the angle measure is, we're just going to call it angle P. I'm going to set up an equation using angle P and two of the other sides. And this is where you have the luxury. You can decide whatever function you'd like to use. Who have we heard from today? Uh, we've heard from everybody. Let's go around again. Dan, what function would you like to use? There's no wrong answer. Sine, cosine, tangent. I gave you an easy question. Cosine. Cosine. Any particular reason? No. Beautiful. All right, so here we go. The, co the cosine of angle P is equal to what, Dan? We did this already. I'm just asking you to repeat it. 3 over 5. Is he right? No. What is it? Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Four over, five. Four over five. All right, now there's a reason why I left that big gap there. You'll see why in a second. Okay, so that's nothing new. The only difference between that and this is we don't know how big the angle measure is. If I'm going to figure out how big angle P is, I need to get rid of the cosine. How do I get rid of the cosine? I undo the cosine using the inverse cosine. I can't just randomly take the inverse cosine of one side. I have to take the inverse cosine of the other side. When you add 2 and subtract 2 to the same equation, they cancel each other out. When you square root a square, they cancel each other out. Therefore, these are going to cancel each other out, and I'm left with just P. This, you do on your calculator. So, do the inverse cosine of 4 divided by 5, close parentheses. Los. Uh, P equals 36.86. Say loud and proud, please. Uh, 36, or P equals 36.86. Can somebody confirm, please? Yeah. yeah. 36.86. And those are degrees. Thank you. You could do that, yes? How would you find angle A based on what we already have? Bob? Just take 90 plus 36.86 to equal 90. Oh, equal, oh, equal. Plus 36.86. 
plus 80 equals 180. Well, that was a mess. Could you try that again? Uh, so 90, which is angle E, plus angle P, which is 36.86, plus A equal 180. Bingo. Okay. All three angles have to add up to 180, so you can do it and just do some simple subtraction. I don't have to do a trick equation again. Okay, now real quick, you don't have to do this, just watch. If Dayan had chosen a different trig function, let's suppose he did tangent, tangent of angle P, tangent of P would be 3 over 4, right, opposite over adjacent. I would do an inverse tangent of both sides. These cancel. Uh, punch into your calculator, inverse tangent of 3 divided by 4, close parentheses, please. You should probably already know what you're going to get, but just to confirm. 36.86? Bingo. And I can do it again with sine. So with the inverse functions, you can choose whichever trig equation you want to use. Are you always going to be given all three sides? No. You may be forced to use a certain one based on the given information, but the setup is exactly the same. All right. I know your head's about ready to explode, but let's do one more example. Now, this one, I didn't give you a picture. So start by drawing a picture. Then check with the rest of your group before you proceed, because if your picture's wrong, you're not going to be able to solve the problem. I'm going to talk while you're doing that. We mentioned the other day that triangles have six chunks of information, three sides, three angles. When it says solve the triangle, that means find all six chunks of information. Okay, so in this one, I have three. I need to find three. This will be our last example, and we'll wrap up with this before your brains run right out of your ears. Abby, what vertex is that? C as in cat. Abby, what vertex is that? B as in badger. I'll ask anyways. Abby, what vertex is that? A as in... Let's back up a second, Abby. C as in cat. B as in badger, A as in, oh, or Abby. I mean, you're an animal, technically speaking, right? Well, you're not a vegetable or a mineral. Okay, good. Abby, which side is this? Which side is this one? You only got one left. C, because it's opposite from C. What side is this? As in? Good. And this one? As in? Okay, you didn't want to go back to Abby, huh? Okay, good. There's the triangle label. Have you just been roaming around? No, I've been in the bathroom. It keeps coming. All right, go down the stairs. You want somebody to come with you? Are you going to pass out? All right, go down the stairs. Come down this hallway. First floor. And then you'll see boys' bathroom, girls' bathroom, the next door is in there. Okay, let me say that again. Boys' bathroom, that'd be okay if you went in there. Girls' bathroom, not okay. Next door, not. You sure you don't want somebody to come with you? Okay, because we're worried if you die, then we're all going to have to go home from school and we'll have like a Brody memorial. So don't die on the way to the nurse. Well, it's happened, I'm sure, at some point. He's just been roaming around bleeding. Well, we're just gonna be stained with blood. Okay. I don't even want to know what the bathroom looks like. It probably looks like a murder scene in there. Okay. <laughs> Plus, we just recorded that whole experience. <laughs> All right. Coming back to this picture, then I know that this is 18. I know that this is 13, and I've got my right angle right there. Does that mean you drew your picture 
No, my picture's good. Well, the 18's not the Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I don't care. I just drew the picture for reference. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. We need three parts. What are the three parts we need? We need side C, we need angle A, and we need angle B. How would you find side C? I'll just use the Pythagorean. Great. If you like Pythagorean theorem, then knock yourself out. 13 squared plus 18 squared equals C squared. One way. You could do trig also, but we'll come back to that later. Okay, now we need two more. And we're almost done. I'm going to start with angle A. Why angle A? No particular reason. I'm just starting with A. Now, here you don't have the luxury that we had in the last problem where you could use whichever trig function you want. Here I have to be very specific. So I'm going to go through the process again. I know the 13. The 13 is the opposite side from angle A. I have the 18. The 18 is the adjacent side to angle A. Therefore, which trig function am I using? Which one uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. Tangent, beautiful. Tangent of angle A is equal to, leave a gap, 13 over 18. On your iPad, it's nice because you can just circle it and move it over. I don't have that luxury. I'm solving for an angle, which means I need to undo the tangent. How do I undo the tangent? I use an inverse tangent of that, which means I need an inverse tangent of that. Cancels, cancels. A is equal to, little help please, what's the inverse tangent of 13 over 18? 35.83. Can somebody confirm? Yeah. 35.83. And those are degrees. How do I find angle B? Three possible ways. Four possible ways. No. One, two, three possible ways. Carrie. Uh, you can take 35.83 and 90 and subtract those from 180. Good. So I lied. There are four possible ways. That's one, and that's the way I would do it. That's easy. What you'll also realize, by the way, to save yourself some hassles, you don't have to incorporate that because these two angles are always going to add up to 90 because 180 minus 90 gives you 90, so these are always 90. That's the way I would do it. 90 minus 35.83, boom, you're done. However, you could also, if you're feeling fancies in your pantsies, you could go and do trig, because now you know all three sides of the triangle. I could do the sine of B, I could do the cosine of B, I could do the tangent of B, but realistically speaking, you're gonna find angle B by doing 90 minus 35.83. Okay. I know it's a lot, but I want to stress this is really important. So for those of you that have just been letting things go, like uh, I'm not going to bother learning quadratics. I'm not going to bother. This isn't going away. If you struggle with trade, you need to come in and get some help or ask questions. You guys are not real good at asking questions in class, so you may have to come in for some one-on-one -on -one help. Okay, but you need to learn this stuff. All right, questions? We're gonna continue with this stuff on, today's Thursday, on, when do I see you again? Monday. We'll do a little bit more solving trig, and a lot of it is a lot of practice. Getting comfortable with working with all different kinds of scenarios. Are you looking for a side? Are you looking for an angle? If I have an angle, how do I find that other angle? I have two of the sides, how do I find the third side? What's that triangle look like? Is that hypotenuse, is that value that I got for the hypotenuse actually longer than the other two? So notice when you solve this Pythagorean theorem, C better be bigger than 18. Okay. And then, um, then you go away for Thanksgiving break, and then when we come back, we'll just continue on with trig. We're pretty much going to do trig for the rest of this chapter. So you're going to have to get good with it. Again, if you loan your calculator to somebody, spend 30 seconds to check to make sure you're in degrees mode every time or you're going to have all kinds of problems. Okay, we good? Again, I'm sorry for the length of the lesson. I would have preferred to give you time to work on it, but I had to get all this covered so that we're good to go moving forward. I'll unlock day two in chapter three.
and uh, you will be good to go. Okay, thank you. Oh.